my name is sunil ravalapalli and today i'm going to talk a little bit about authentication in dotnet web api 2 let's start off by creating a visual studio project we'll open up visual studio 2013 and then we start with a new project we select the asp.net web application you can name it web API demo and then click OK. Visual Studio will ask what type of web application project we want. We'll choose the web API. It will automatically select the MVC and web API which is OK. And then we would want to change authentication to individual user accounts. This gives us our own database which has all the user tables and also provides infrastructure to do authentication using Facebook, Twitter, Google, Microsoft logins. So we'll go ahead and click OK. As you can see we have selected individual user accounts and then we hit OK. This will open up our project Visual Studio will set up all the infrastructure and we really ha don't have to do anything much. Once Visual Studio finishes setting up the project the most important part in the whole solution is the controllers folder. We can see Visual Studio has set up a home controller which is actually a MVC controller and then it set up two other controllers one is the account controller which is actually responsible for the authentication logic and then we also have the values controller which is behind an authorized attribute so if you want to call anything in the values controller we would need to send some kind of authentication information let's go ahead and start the project Visual Studio will open up the website and uh, since we have a home controller it will op uh, open that up as a front end and we can see the uh, we can see the UI in the browser if you click on API note that the URL changes to help and then we can see all our web API methods which are supported in our website so if you see account under the account controller we have user info log out change password set password add external login and others but the important one we want to to play around with today is the register control also we'll see that the other controller the other other api controller is the values controller and it has some methods which it, it also supports so let's click on the help for the register method and then we'll see how we can call this API. To call this API, we'll use a tool, code tool called Fiddler. So we can go to the compose tab and then we have the URL right here and then to call that to register a user we need to post so we'll select post and the URL is slash API slash account slash register so we can add that slash API slash account slash register And then this is a sample of the request, JSON request, which we can send in the post body. But we need to know that we have to send an additional HTTP header called content type colon application slash 
json so let's create a user let's call him tom and uh, let's choose a password called password and let's confirm it as password so next we hit execute Note that the request is still processing. The first time we call it, it takes a long time because our Visual Studio is setting up our database for the first time. If we double, we can see that we have we have a return request of 200, which means it's okay. Double click it, and we can see the response which we got back. We don't get any data back but we do know but that the request was successful. Let's go back to Visual Studio and st stop the solution. We can just for curiosity check the database which was created. We'll go to Server Explorer. In Data Connections we should have our connection set up if you want additional information about the connection string and stuff, the connection st string actually comes from the web config. You can find the default connection there and the connection string right next to it. So we'll go back to Server Explorer and then go to default connection, expand it, check what tables are there, and we'll check the users table. Let's see what data is in that. Once we do show table data, we'll see that our username Tom was created. Okay, so now we have a user. Can we, how do we call the values controller? To call the values controller, we need to somehow log in first. If we see the help page once again, we will see that there is no real login controller. We have external login, which has something to do with Facebook and open auth login stuff, but there's no real API to log in with using our own credentials. To log in, the information, we, we can get the information to log in from this file, we'll see that in startup.auth.cs, we, we have some OAuth options and the token endpoint path is slash token. So what we can do is, let's try to log in now, once again. So we'll just delete all the previous data. What we need to do is our URL, do a token to What we need to do is, in the header, we need to do con a content content type colon application slash x www form URL encoded, and the request body should be in this format. Note that this has to be post tom password and grant type password and then we hit execute. Connection failed. That's because we don't have our web server running. So we'll start up the web server and then go back to Fiddler and then go back to our Composer tab and then execute again. Now we'll see Fiddler sending the request and we wait for it to come back. Now we see we have a response of 200, which is good. We'll double click that and check out the data which came back. So it was successful request because it was a 200. And then we see the data which came back. We are on the JSON tab. This is a token which comes back. And these are some of the fields identifying when it expires, when it was issued and what the username is and what the token type is. So the most interesting thing is a token. So what we need to do is copy this. So 
So this is a token which client has to store. So if it's like an iPhone application, when the user puts in their username and password, the iPhone has to call our domain name slash token, pass in their username and password, and then uh, the web API will return this token, which the iPhone has to store it locally, and then pass in in the subsequent request. For now, since we are just playing with Fiddler, we'll just copy that and just save it in our text file. So next, the actual authenticated request we want to call is API slash values. So let's get it rid of the rest of the thing. So API values is just a get request. And then we need to pass in this special authorization, authorization header and its name is bearer. And then we also put in the authentication token right next to it. And then we just do execute. And then we have authenticated request. Then we just double click it and we can see that we did actually get back value one and value two, which is the values in the values controller. Just for curiosity, we can let's remove, let's try to call the API values without any authentication header. We will see that we got a 401, which means unauthorized. That is the end of the short video on authentication in .NET Web API 2. Thank you for watching.